oblique comb we'll be developing in this session is a truncated comb, meaning it is cut off at the top. It's required to be 40 millimeters high, I've had a diameter of 60 millimeters. And as we have done with previous drawings, we're going to start by drawing a horizontal line 40 millimeters up from the bottom of the page. We are then going to draw a vertical line approximately up the center of the page and mark our apex point 70 millimeters up from that horizontal line. We will then mark across 20 millimeters from the vertical line and then a further 60 millimeters from there. Now draw a line between those markings and the apex point. Once that is completed, we will need to mark the center line for marking our radius 30 mil in from the edge. We will then need to measure up 40 millimeters from the horizontal line and draw a line across to complete the truncated cone. Now, as before, we're marking a semicircle from the center of the base of the cone and drawing it all the way around. We will then use the same setting on the compass to divide up that semicircle into six equal parts. Now, instead of marking our lines straight up, what we need to do is place the compass on the intersect point between the horizontal line and the vertical and mark arches up to the base of the funnel. This will provide us with the true lengths of the oblique cone. Once you've completed these arches, number or label each of your points. You can use any numbering or labeling system you deem to be appropriate. Using a straight edge or ruler, you can now carry those lines up to the apex point. You can draw these lines only up to the top of the cone rather than all the way to the apex point if you choose. Now take the point of your compass, place it at the apex point and mark it at number 7 or inscribe the arch all the way around. Now repeat this process for all of the other points. From the apex point, place the straight edge of your ruler, mark it to the outside of one of the radiuses to make point number one. Now set your compass to the distance between any two of the division points as we've done previously. Place the compass point at point number one on the inner radius and mark the next radius outward. Use the next point created to mark the next one on the next radius and continue this until you've worked all the way out to number seven. Once you have marked all these points, number them 1 through 7. Now continue from point number 7 and work your way back in through the radiuses as done previously. From the outside inwards, label them 6 down through to 1. From each of your 13 points, you can now mark a line from each point to the apex point. To keep the pattern from looking overly complicated, we'll only mark the line to the inner radius. Now number the points at the top of your truncation to correspond with the numbers at the bottom. Using your compass, place the compass point at the apex point and line it up with point number one and mark it on the lines heading out to each of the other markings that correspond with number one. Repeat this process for all of the other markings. Each of your markings should be working from the outside inwards of your pattern.
you can now use a ruler to measure the true lengths of your cone and compare them to those markings on your pattern. Using a pencil you can join up the markings trying to follow the natural curve between them. You now have the completed pattern for the oblique cone. Cut the pattern out using a pair of scissors. Using a piece of sticky tape, roll the cone and join the two ends together as neatly as possible and you will now have the task completed. Your cone should match the same drawing that you created previously.